Hey guys, so off we go again. We're on the play with a interesting hand. I'm not gonna mulligan because I have unfortunately it's not a turn one soul ring, it's a turn two. Um but I'm gonna keep it because if I draw an untapped land I can go turn one soul ring and then turn two three visits. Otherwise it's not as great, but I think it's still a pretty uh good hand and yeah, look at that. We uh we got there. So the question is do I wanna go for I think I'm still gonna play this. Yeah, I'm gonna play that. Um because there's nothing I'm gonna do anyway on turn two with three mana that doesn't involve green mana, and this way I get to cast this thing, turn two, and the soul ring. So I play this untapped, soul ring and three visits, and that gets me uh, quite a bit of ramp. So uh let's see who we have here. Masako the humorless. I haven't seen this one so far. Uh, what does it do? Flash tap creatures you control can block as though they were untapped. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's a good start from this guy. The shaman, the or whatever, however you pronounce this thing. Uh, anyway, back to our turn. We'll keep checking out the commanders later. So, I would like to pay to life, get my soul ring out there. Then I'll go get a forest. I can get, I don't have anything to do with two mana anyway, so I will get, what do I need, like, uh, I need a second, I have green, I need black, so it's gonna be a overgrown tomb, do not want to pay life, yeah, so let's keep looking at the commanders, we have Sharum the Hegemon, so, uh, an artifact deck probably. Poof. A lot of boots going on. Alrighty then. Uh, okay, that's that's not particularly great for us. That's okay. We still have like mass removals. So that's not the end of the world. The world. And the uh, Riku of the Two Reflections. That's decent. We're getting attacked. That makes sense because we are the ones that are in one of the best positions alongside him at the start, just because we have the most ramp. And here we go then. So two, three, four, five, six, how do I have? I can't really cast my bringer, unfortunately. I can't cast this thing either, because I need two black. I have six mana. I can't cast this either, because I don't have two blue. So these are the things I can cast. This is too expensive, so I guess I'll just uh, drop um, an Arc Mage then. Not much else I can do. Yeah. So we need to draw actually some I think with pretty much any land we can cast some of our things here. Two, three, four, five, six, yeah. With one man one more land we can cast this. One more color land we can cast that. A blue we can cast this, a black we can cast this, so yeah. Getting attacked again, that's acceptable. So this guy is just charging that, nothing too exciting, and I guess just passing my turn. So Let's see what we draw. Elishnorn. Okay, another thing we can't really cast. Uh, I'm not gonna block anything, so I guess I'll go attack that guy. Um, yeah. Don't see much else that I can do. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I can't cast anything. So, yeah. I think this was one of the few cards in our deck that doesn't do anything for us. But what can you do? Masuka the Humorous, I see. Makes sense. I'm still getting bashed. That's still acceptable. I mean, I don't, I don't mind that. I wasn't gonna block anyway with my Archmage. Two more for me, I guess. Yup. 
and nothing else for him. That's at least good for us. Good thing is he doesn't have blue mana, so at the moment there's no one that can counter any of our spells. So that is pretty decent. And I think our spell will be, assuming we draw any land, I would say an Elish Norn. Because that gets the best defense for us going on. Phyrexian Metamorph. Alright. What will you copy? That makes sense. That's a good choice, I think. And we drew the <laughs> another useless card. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and pass here. Because there's not much we can do. I'm going to leave this guy back just to... Just so this guy doesn't really want to attack into us. I mean, if he attacks, maybe I'll block? I don't even know. Probably won't. But... I don't know if he really wants to do that. Galvanic Juggernaut. Alright. Equipping it. I guess he's going to be bashing us. Indeed. So I'm not going to be blocking that thing. I'll leave it back because actually if I drop an Elish Norn next turn I can trade with it with my Archmage. Well, at least he's not attacking us anymore. That's not going to work out so great for him. He can just block it with a Juggernaut. What the hell is going on? Do you read the cards at all? That was pretty bad. I mean, wasn't an obscure interaction. It's just his general. <laughs> Weird. Explosive vegetation from this guy. Yeah, I think what the Riku decks do is just ramp a huge amount and then try to take advantage from that. Such a weird play by the by the artifact guy and by the charm guy. <laughs> All right, we got that land. So, and actually, we can cast anything in our hand now. The question is, what will it be? And I think it's still going to be a Leshnorn. This guy can theoretically counter it, but it's not even that bad for him. Um, I could drop that, but it's not the best because it trades with that. Yeah, I'm just dropping Elish Norn here. What up? No, don't counter it. Be nice. Nice. I don't really want to bash you, I'll just pass. I think I have to p play a bit of D now, especially since I have a. Uh, so much gas in hand. What is this guy doing? Yeah, that doesn't really worry me at all. Attacking this other guy, that's fine by me. My god. This guy just went, no black killed me, GG. He didn't draw black in the first couple of turns, so he's conceding. What an idiot. Yeah, well, unfortunately you get these kind of people in EDH. So let's see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, um. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. So that was trace work again. I. You may cast this. With this card in the land. Okay, so you can cast this forever, basically. That kind of sucks for me. Okay, so, um, what am I going to do here? Okay, so I think I have to drop this thing. Um, and then leave this guy up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Alrighty then. So let's go for red, green, 
blue or white what am I missing blue and black yeah so we're gonna go for that thing and I guess we can jump the juggernaut with that and then we have enough mana to cast this if we really need to I mean this guy can spinning image it but that's something I can live with and then I'm not sure what I'll get here probably something good <laughs> I have no idea we'll see okay so at this point I will just jump with that thing because I don't want to take too much damage especially when I have this thing in play I'm not sure if I have something to to put counters on my guys to combo with persist I'll have to take a look now on my turn manor gargoyle interesting okay so here comes Riku that's fine Yeah. Okay. Um what am I getting here? I do wanna do that. The question is what am I getting? Pa 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 he's gonna tap one of my guys. So he could go get like a Mirari's wake. And then there's two, three, four, five, and I have six mana left for the Geth. That he can kill with that, but that's fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, la 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 la. What will it be? Tear command is an option, but not a good one. Hmm. Thing is, do I survive if I get a a Mirari's Wake? I think I do. Like I can play Mirari's Wake and get two, three, four, five, and then get. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go get Mirari's Wake. I could get a Mimoplasm. Get like. Uh, no, nah, I only have one creature in play, or in the battlefield. I could get that, but it's not the best. Nickel Bolas is an option. Nah. No, I think I'm gonna go for the Mirari's Wake, and that, that gives me more options next turn. So we're dropping that Mirari's Wake, and then we will cast this guy. And that at least gets us easily through the next turn. Uh oh. He said that's what I thought it would be. <laughs> I hope that doesn't mean uh <laughs> I hope he doesn't mean he has some sort of disenchant. Let's see. Casting that girl, okay. Interesting that she didn't tap anything. Now this guy can actually two, three, four, yeah, he can re hitting image retray so like kill my geth and get his own thing I guess that's something he can do but that's fine because the next turn I can actually go get a hallowed burial and then I take care of both uh, commanders and all those shenanigans okay so he's just tapping my dude and then he can get him for four that's fine because otherwise he has to suicide this guy I guess that's that's acceptable Okay, so he's tapping a bunch, this guy, so I guess that is there. Okay. Y yeah, he's just that with replication. That's absolutely irrelevant because I'm going to go fetch a Wrath of God. That's actually better for me. So then, I do. Yeah, so I'm going to go get that Hallowed Burial now. Thank you very much. And I will, as a matter of fact, attack this guy. Uh, 
Um, so I'm going to attack that guy. Because I actually want my guys dead, not in the bottom of my library. So let's see if he bites. Yeah, so he's blocking everything, so that's fine. All my guys die. Uh, yeah, whatever. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> now I'm casting this. Uh, and then I think I'm just leaving desertion up. I think that's the best use of my mana. Rather than playing a legacy weapon. I do have one, one, two, three, four. I don't have enough for progenitus, so I could cast this. It wouldn't be terrible. Yeah, maybe I just go for this. I'll actually just go for this. Yeah, I think that's better. Because then that's actually better because because next turn I can just pass with all my mana up and then cast the surgeon if I need to and otherwise end of turn remove stuff with my legacy weapon uh, okay it's not really important alternatively I can just cast progenitus and smash face but what the hell eh I, uh, I'm a bit lost here, I'm not sure what's going on, but yeah, these guys are pretty bad. Oh, neat, what's what's neat? Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what that's doing, but okay. So then, um, do I drop Progenitus or do I keep this thing up? I think I'm just gonna legacy weapon end of turn. That sounds like the best, and then I can drop progenitus, progenitus next turn. Righteous cause, yeah, that's not important at all. Does he draw a couple of cards now? Yeah, I think he does. So this guy's gonna be my number one target. I think I'm gonna exile a couple of his cards and then. I will progenitus next turn. I would like to draw one more land actually, so I can progenitus and keep the searching up. I can do it with one more land. So I think actually my play here is to just keep legacy weaponing until I can cast uh, progenitus with the surgeon backup. That sounds reasonable. So let's see what's going on. Okay, sorry for that. I had a small issue with my uh, recording. So let me put you, uh, let you guys know what's going on here. Um, it's been one round since we last saw each other. In this guy's turn, he dropped a Chameleon Colossus, which I exiled end of turn as, uh, as long as, as well as his Kessig Wolf run. So he can't trample me for a bunch. Uh, then on my turn, I dropped Progenitus with the Searching Backup because I drew my, my land for that. So, um, yeah, we have Progenitus up, and we will be uh, trying to kill this guy. Uh, he also dropped a doubling season, and that's pretty much it. He brainstormed, and Kodama's reach. This guy didn't do anything last turn or the one before. That doesn't really do anything. I mean, he can fly over me, but that's acceptable. Yeah, I'm still in a pretty decent position. I have, like, he can hit me for, like, three, and then I go to ten, but I'm still pretty pretty good there. Yeah, so he milled Study, Collective Restraint, and Coiling Oracle. I'm still fine with all of this. That's why I kind of exiled the Kessif Wolfron, because otherwise it would have been much more uh, scary. Yeah, he can still 
mill me for a bunch, but it's virtually impossible that I get milled here. So yeah, he can give all those guys flying, but that doesn't do anything. Because next turn I can, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, I can excel a bunch of things. And I still have a counter for any weird stuff that he might have, so yeah. Milled a Kozilek, so I'm shuffling all my graveyard there. Well, I guess now I'm for sure not getting milled. So I'm getting hit for 3 here, that doesn't really do anything. So that was it for him. I'll just disenchant one of his things. Um, that is the most annoying one. Because it can tap, well, it can't really tap my Pergendas, but maybe it'll tap a blocker or something like that. I could get his doubling season, I guess that's a good one to get to, but yeah. Uh it is not really bothering me at the time. Right. Hmm. So Still not enough to do everything that I want. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't activate this four times. I could next turn though, maybe. Anyway, I'm gonna kill this guy. Um, well, I'm gonna attack him. And the next turn I get hit for, I can exile one of his guys, and then possibly this one, and then I get hit for two, and that's not really the end of the world. Also I can get a blocker if uh, if this guy plays anything so that's fine by me. So yeah again I'm just passing here because I kill him next turn with commander damage so I'll just keep my counter spell up keep my exile thing up. I could get into big trouble with like a with like a crows and grip. I guess that's the reason to exile some of his things now, but he he could also I think is that's less likely than him getting hmm. I think that's less likely than him getting something with haste. Yeah, actually I think I'm not going to risk it, I'm just going to do it now. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Green, blue, uh, black, and white. And I'm going to exile this thing. And I'm going to exile his uh, seascape dude as well. So what's going on here? Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. What? Change the spell of target by replacing all this of a creature type with another. What? I don't know, but I'll just uh search in that just in case. So, uh, just in case, because then I can copy one of his guys and block and even block with a Kiki Jiki. I'm not sure what he was doing with this. A creature type? I have no idea. But he does have doubling season, so he could do something nasty with that. But yeah, anyway, so we have that as a blocker just in case, because he ha might have something nasty going on, especially with a doubling season. Say, so, what does that do? First strike, not important at all. 
though it does get to mill me if he wants to. He milled a conflux, that is kind of annoying, but cool that I get like a, an eternal witness or something to go fetch an eternal witness. So he's just passing here, which I'm fine with. And then I'm going to kill this guy. And if I drop a creature, I can copy it with a Kiki Jiki. Best case scenario is like an Eternal Witness or a. Oof, what's the name of it? Or a Green Sun Zenith or any kind of tutor to go get it. Because if I get a tutor, I can go for Eternal Witness, get this back, copy it, get my tutor back. Like a lot of nasty things, let's say. And then I have even this thing to go with the Eternal Witness, so pretty busted. This is not a bad draw, actually. Um, so I'll just drop it. Two, four. Because now I have another counter for any sort of um, shenanigans. I'll put a copy of this thing with haste. So I can attack this guy. And now I'll just... Uh, Kill this guy off and attack him with a copy. It's not like the three damage matter, but you know. So, um, one, two, three, four, five. I'll just drop that as well. Yeah. <laughs> he says he doesn't have anything to get him out of the situation. Uh, yeah. I do believe that. So yeah, he says he doesn't have anything, and um, yeah, he just concedes. So that was our second game. We actually won with our commander here, which is something that this deck this deck does kind of often. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. As always, Mirari's Wake is the okay. What's this about? Mirari's Wake is the MVP. So yeah, 